Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all excellent. You've seen the title of the video. You know what's happening. I went and bought a Boogie Mark IV. Oh, it's so tiny, but it's so compact. It's like the neutron star of guitar amps. And we're just going to play around with it and pull a bunch of sounds because that's what you do with glorious gear. We're going to hear it with a few different guitars and I'm just going to talk away and do my thing. But I do have to say a massive thank you to Thomas, who I bought this amp off. He's over in Brisbane and I got an unsolicited email from him. So anybody who ever says not to reply to those unsolicited emails that will, you know, make your tone bigger. I guess in this case it did work. So uh, thank you, Thomas, for selling me your amp. It is a wonderful wonderful example of a wonderful amplifier and it just so happens that I got that email like two days after I had sold a few things that I wasn't using and I was like well I got some money kicking around uh, I'm going to add that to the gear slush fund and just like that this thing kind of came into my life so you know uh, great pieces of gear probably choose you as much as you choose them. So if you haven't seen my previous video that I did all the way back in February with the Mark IV, not this one, but a different one, uh, go and check it out. And this is in every way a follow-up to that. And I've already learned so many things about how these amps work just by having an extended run with one of them. This is a Revision B, so it has the stereo effects loop and a few other little tweaks. But, uh, you know, if you don't have a choice between a Mark for a or a mark for b i don't think it's a massive difference they're incredible sounding amps so let's dive straight into it let's immediately get started with the good stuff i am on the lead channel i have the graphic eq engaged it's on the mid gain voicing for the lead channel which is a little bit kind of smoother and gooier and i've basically got this set up for that classic boogie absolutely glorious high gain crunch that I love. I basically get up in the morning looking forward to this kind of sound, whether I'm getting it out of an amp like this or I'm getting it out of the model in my Axe FX3 or FM3, which I use live. So really quickly, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> That's my happy place right there. The three band EQ is pre-gain. That is a real important thing to stress with these amps. So they really play a massive role in shaping the overall texture and feel of the gain control. So I have the mid-range at about two. These amps have so much mid-range, so you really don't need to push it. I've got the bass at about one. Similarly, the bass control, if you pull it up, uh, I find anywhere past about three, it just gets really, really muddy with high gain. But I've got the treble cranked up. There's also two gain controls here. I have the lead gain, kind of like the input gain over here, just below five. And I've got the lead drive all the way up. There's also a pull bright on that control, which I'll uh, give you an example of what it does. So pull bright is off, then I'm gonna pull it out. Uh, I was gonna say kick it in, but you pull it out. <laughs> Very, very nice stuff right there. And I find you don't really have to push the presence too much on these amps, probably because of the design of the graphic EQ. You have the 2200 hertz slider, which I really like to crank, and the 6600 hertz slider, which I don't push as much, but I kind of balance that out with the treble control. Now, there are a bunch of switches and so many jacks on the back of this particular amp. For example, I mentioned earlier, I have this on the mid gain voicing. There's a harmonics voicing. I'll let you know what harmonics sounds like. Let's click that. <laughs> So that's kind of cool, but like I said, where's the switch? Make sure I don't burn myself on a tube or something. Uh, this is mid-game. It's a little le less tight, it's a little bit thicker, but I certainly like it. There's also a pull shift on the presence control, which kind of dips the volume. I'll normalize this in post so that it's the same volume as everything else we've heard. <laughs> I 
I prefer it not pulled out. But we also have pull fat on the input gain control over here, which is perfect for lead playing. I'll uh, add some delay in post as well on all of it. <laughs> That is ridiculously enjoyable. So what I want to showcase with this really quickly before we go any further is just how good this records because I've just done a very basic double track. I've taken one of the lockdown session backing tracks we did with Ragdoll, it's for the song Shine. I'll show off the lead tone first. So that's with the fat switch engaged. So that pull fat is pulled out. And then we are gonna have a listen to a double tracked rhythm of just kind of like the end chorus where I have that pushed back in and not engaged. That's the only difference between those two sounds. I did say they were double tracked. This lead sound is just gonna be a mono guitar with some stereo delay, but then the rhythm parts will be double tracked. Let's hear that. Let's hear this with a few different guitars. I'll just roll with the same settings for now. Something like that. Anyway, this is a PRS Custom 24 with a Duncan JB and Jazz pickup set. So I really, really like that. This guitar is a lot snappier than my Custom 24 and it translates onto the amp as well, especially using those uh, kind of single coil sounding modes. They're actually parallel modes with different coils from the humbuckers. And this actually kind of cleans up quite nicely with this guitar. <laughs> Next, let's try some P90s. I've got some TV Jones humbucker size P90s in this guitar. I haven't tried this yet, but pretty keen to hear how this combination works. <laughs> Thank you. 
last but not least, let's hear some strat action. What I've done here is I've got the pull fat pushed in. I'm going to pull it out in a second because it makes a massive difference with single coils, especially on a bright guitar like this. I backed the treble off and I've pulled the bass and the mid range up a little bit, again, just to compensate for the fact this is a strat. <laughs> It still gets pretty wiry on that bridge pickup though. All right, let's do this. Let's go to rhythm channel number two. I'm actually gonna turn the graphic EQ off and try not to incinerate my fingers while I'm doing it. Okay, the EQ's off. Let's have a play around with some kind of mid gain tones because I feel like maybe it's just me, but I always focus on you know the stuff we've just spent <laughs> all of the video on so far, the lead channel, all the really clean stuff. But this rhythm two is really, really cool. Going back to that kind of bass middle treble being, I guess, a three band gain control in this amp. The rhythm channels share a bass and a middle control, but they each have their independent treble control. So over here, you've got R2 treble, which you can play around with. So uh, let's just have a listen to where this is at. I've got the gain about halfway. Again, this has a pull fat on the gain control, but it's only got one gain control. <laughs> That's just silly. Let's hear that with the P90s. <laughs> That has got a really interesting thing going on with these P90s. I really like that. I wouldn't mind hearing this with another Les Paul. I've got a Les Paul with some awesome Martin A. Smith humbuckers that are hand wound here in sunny Perth, Western Australia. Let's hear that one. <laughs>
man, that's really cool. You never kind of think of a boogie as being able to do the ACDC thing, but it, you know, it gets close enough, especially with a guitar with humbuckers like this. What I'm going to do is crank the gain up and we'll move over to another humbucker equipped guitar and I'm going to engage the graphic on rhythm two. <laughs> Probably not the best version of Bad Boys, or Battery for that matter, that you're ever going to hear, but uh, this kind of Rhythm 2 channel, it's not quite as glorious and saturated as the lead channel, but it can definitely do that thing whenever you want it to do that. I also used the pull shift on the presence for a few things there. Uh, if I go with the pull fat control on there, and let's go over to the neck pickup on this guitar, uh, let's just check it out. <laughs> It's not as nice as a lead channel, let's face that. I think if you were using this as a true three channel amp, you'd probably set this one up for your crunch and maybe use a boost these days, or maybe just do what I would do and play everything on the lead channel. But anyway, speaking of the clean channel, let's move over to there. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my Les Paul with humbuckers. I've got the mid range control around three or four, I've got the bass at halfway and the treble around six or seven. Now, getting a clean tone with humbuckers, if you're on like a Marshall style amp, uh, is always a bit of a challenge, but I really like here that you can combine, obviously, the rhythm one gain control together with the three band EQ to really kind of fine tune what's going on to actually get uh, something resembling a clean tone with humbuckers. I'm on the neck pickup of this guitar. Let's check it out. <laughs> just heard there that tiny little tweak on the bass control went from kind of sounding really flubby and really starting to be pushed to just cleaning up in a really wonderful manner there. And again, the pull bright, the amount of gain that you're using on there uh, all comes in super handy. Let's hear this on the tweed power mode. And what I'm going to do is crank up the actual master volume on this channel and I'll compensate by turning the output level down just a little bit. Basically, if you crank the output level and you have the master channel low, it sounds a lot cleaner than if you do it the other way around. Uh, so I kind of dig this way of doing it.
that's really, really sweet. That's sort of the driven sound I always want to get out of Fender amps that I struggle with. Let's hear this with the P90s. <laughs> what it does with the green PRS. It's definitely what I would consider an American voiced amp on this clean channel number one, but what a sound. That is so much fun and it's got such a different character with different guitars, which I really, really enjoy. I could keep doing this for hours and hours, but I'll let you all go and watch some other stuff on this glorious thing called YouTube. I will play you out with just a little bit more of that lead channel and some delay though. So thank you all so much for watching and uh, just letting me indulge myself over the course of this video. If you wanna support the channel, there are links to my music and my Patreon in the video description. Otherwise, stay safe, be excellent to one another. I'll see you all next time.